All right, Packer Nation, or as Aaron Rodgers likes to call it now, Packer World. You may have thought that we went on a, on a hiatus and you got rid of us, but Packers on the Rocks is, is back for episode three. Selfishly speaking, uh, this is more of a therapy session um, for myself, um, potentially Dave included. Uh, but with that being <laughs> said, Dave, cheers. I know this one is well needed here with the Packers on the yeah. Rocks and Bourbon, but here we go. Episode three. Let's let's get this thing underway. Uh, yeah, we skipped the Giants game. So let's just uh, it's you know, it's fitting that uh, we lose back to back to New York uh, <laughs> coming into this. Um, who boy. Um, yeah, this one this one is a tough pill to swallow. I mean, but it's the first time in the LaFleur era we've lost back to back games. So it feels like the world's crumbling, even though a lot of fan bases deal with this type of stuff but uh Packers not used to dealing with adversity and they're not good at responding to adversity I mean up, up until now it's been one of those things we, we take the ugly loss but we know the team is going to respond the far following week and they'll they'll get it together and completely the bounce back game as it's been the past three years under under the LaFleur regime uh this is one of those losses too, where I, I'm going to hold out from sticking a fork in this team. But as we were, as we were just talking about uh, here a few minutes ago, it, it does have a little bit of a feeling that me and you, along with the collective other group of people, is is stepping into a time machine and we're, we're warping back to the year of, of 2018. Have you have you gotten that impression, or what what are your thoughts as far as? I mean, yeah. I definitely want to spend a lot of the show talking about the offense because I think they're the the root of the root of it all. Yeah, it, it has some now Lef, to kind of wind back a little bit. Lafleur just got an extension. Lafleur is a good coach. Lafleur is not going anywhere. Like it's not like a McCarthy. Like this is like to stick a fork in the coaches. But this is like yeah, that's not what I meant either by a flashback to 2018. It's more yeah. the, the Roger Rogers led offense. I believe in Lafleur. Saw a couple people say, hey, we already got to get rid of him. He doesn't know how to get this team to, to play for him anymore. But I'm on the little floor bandwagon for sure. Still, yeah, it, it's not a coach lost his voice type thing. It's not like we need to get rid of the floor six weeks into this thing. That's not what we're talking about. But it, it's the same rooted problems of, you know, two yard run. OK, we're going to take two deep shots in a row. And it's kind of it's the 18 feel is more Rogers, I guess, led than coaching staff feel where it's just it's it's not throwaways out of bounds but it's just taking unnecessary deep shots where it's got guys are double covered or he has such a tight window where he's just not that it, it's, it's such a low percentage throw now where he's just missing the checkdowns. and do you think that it's, i really do want to get your take on what's what's probably going through rogers head right now but i i think to myself and it does it's early summer to 2018 i don't want to say he's lost complete confidence in this offense and the pieces that he has around him. But to me, it's like, hey, instead of throwing it away, which he he did in 2018 time and time again, he's like, hey, I'm just going to chuck the ball down the field knowing that I'm not going to turn the ball over, but the likelihood of it completing is is very small. Any, anything and if any anything at all for him to avoid interceptions, but just to kind of throw his hands up and just say, fuck it, I'm just going to throw it out there. Yeah, I actually at this point, like I wouldn't mind – like as bad as it sounds, I wouldn't mind the interceptions. Like if the interceptions were like not the throws he's making, like the throws where it's like, okay, I'm going to try to fit into this slant on third and six and hopefully the guy catches it for eight yards and we pick up the first down. Not this, I'm going to throw it up on, you know, third and two, 40 yards deep. Like, but my, my thing is I think he has a really quick internal clock right now, which it's not like surprising. Like Newman's just, on roller skates the, Jenkins is not a right tackle move him inside like the entire offensive line it starts there like and I think that's part of the reason why they're not getting Jones and Dylan going is because they're like why hand it off when the Jets are five yards into our backfield all right I'm gonna all add right. this came to me because I I do think of like Brett Favre and he'll take his chances he'll get his interceptions but he's also going to give you a shot at winning where these just shot plays down the field you may he landed what one out of 12 compared to oh to oh and six last yeah. week he might have landed two if you call the lazard touchdown um a shot play but 
the Lozardo on the sideline too is a shot boy. That thirty yard, thirty five yard hit where he Lazard makes a ridiculous catch. Yeah, which just like last week too to finally get the offense going. So question posed for yourself. Um, would you rather have Rodgers, who's about ready to turn 39 in December, or would you rather have 07 Favre? Well, actually, 07 Favre was pretty good. Let's go. <laughs> let's just go far, far of it, far of around the the time of like 04, uh, 05, and 06, when that was during a, a potential rebuild as well. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, just came to me. I mean, each each have their like downside. I mean, one of you is well, Favre was like a clear like detriment to the team, where it was like three turnover games. But the, the Rogers thing is maddening too because he doesn't he plays the numbers so much where it's just he doesn't give you a shot. He thinks you you have a shot with you know that throw, but it's such a you know he's putting it in a spot where it's no risk, you know, kind of no reward. So it's like. Far at least they threw it and the camera would go and you're like, well, this is either going to be a great catch or it's going to be an interception. <laughs> He's at least giving – I'd probably take an 05 Favre over what I've seen in the past few games with Rodgers. At least Favre is giving you a shot at winning. This yeah. low risk, hey, I know I'm not going to throw an interception – BS that he's done and it's like hey I've kind of given up and we'll maybe hit a few of these things and then he's he's holding on to his thumb after every single play and they're gonna they're gonna potentially use the excuse of oh he's got a hurt thumb then don't try chucking the ball 40 50 yards down the field how about that do you remember when Favre broke his thumb and he just handed it out to Amon Green 35 times with his left hand and Amon Green had like 1800 yards rushing like why didn't we do that? Like, okay, great. Let's run it 40 times. But yeah, yeah that was, that was Oh three when we, that was four, that was the fourth and 26 year. Uh, I want to say, cause in Oakland, he had the, he had the splint on the thumb as well. Yeah. And he was far. So it's like far could let his ego go to the side and not play hero ball and hand the ball off to Mon green. Well, guess what? We got a Mon green of sorts in our backfield who got three, three touches in the first half. Yeah. Everybody's um, that drama by now. The sky, you know, sky's not falling. I mean, this has hmm, – we're so used to 13-3, and three, like, what, three years in a row now that maybe some adversity would help. Like, okay, fine, we eke into the playoffs. We go – you know, you get that 10-7, and 11-6, and six, I mean, record, and you, you eke into a final wild card spot. Maybe that does us some good because home field in the bye – does not help apparently so maybe bad and battle harden us and you know we started three and three last time we won a, a championship not to say this was this feels anything close to that team because that team had the talent and they're just beat to absolute shit and they got in so this doesn't feel like we have the talent we're not beat up we have the talent but it's just like execution game plan like everything just seems like we're working against ourselves that's seeing that's seeing the forest or the trees or the beauty in the the darkness uh, that we're having or the light in the darkness. My glass my glass is still half full too. The 03 team, the uh, fourth and twenty six. I want to say they started one and four as well. Which yeah, maybe this team does need a bit of a, a kick in the pants and uh, for to be able to face some adversity before you get to the playoffs when everything's been just smooth sailing. And here here's also another like silver lining. I know my glass is not even close to half full, but we'll pretend it is. Um, the other great part about it right now is uh, look around the NFC outside of like the Eagles. I don't think the giants are, are true contenders along with like the Cowboys as well. You got the bucks and the Rams both at three and three right now. They said outside of like the Eagles, um, yeah. every, every other conference is looking very mediocre right now. So, hey, there, there, there could be a positive right there in the NFC. Everyone's just beating each other up right now, which is, you know, okay. Um, the, the concerning part with Rodgers is I don't know if it's – well, it's one, he doesn't have time, but I don't – I think he's jittery right now because there's, there's clips with all 22 where you're seeing guys like Dobbs constantly win, and he's just not pulling the trigger. Like, it's clear as day. Um, I mean, Tunyon had a, had a big day, but like he's still, and now with Cobb out, 
maybe Amari Rogers. I mean, who knows if they put him on an offense, but maybe now with Cobb out, that's one of his boys gone that he has to look somewhere else. But um, it's he only has time to kind of get to one or two reads with this offensive line. And it's like, okay, I'm going to look Lazard. I don't know the reads, but it's like, I'm going to look Lazard. I'm going to look Tunyon. Okay. I'm, I'm out of time. When there's guys clearly winning their routes early on. It is. It's, it's almost like he's picking back up from having like his woes in that 49er playoff game where he got, um, he had people in his lap early and often. And then he just started, looking for Devontae and Devontae only and chucking it deep towards them, which is probably, I know you tried doing a segue here earlier uh, towards the offensive line, but I at least wanted to harp on um, old, old 12 just a little bit more because he's he, it's mind boggling some of the things that he does and things that he says and just how talented he is. And he's the league MVP. It's um, but that is probably a good time to, to move into this, this offensive line of ours and, how we almost seem to be in our own way. And I don't quite understand what uh, what Stenovich sees, what LaFleur sees in our offensive line. But, like, how is it that you're going to take Jake Hansen and put him back at right guard when you and you're pulling Newman as if you didn't see what he put on film before? And you got Zach Tom sitting on the bench. You also have Nyman potentially at right. I mean, there's a number of moves that they can be able to make. Yeah. Along with Ian shit, I mean, put put Sean Ryan in there as well. I'll take him over Jake Hansen. But, like, what is it? Like, why is it that the coaches are seeing something completely different than us fans and getting in their own way? Uh, well, they've been preaching best five, and they have yet to roll out their best five. So, um, you made a good point where you brought up Steno. How much of a factor do you think Steno moving to offensive coordinator and Butkus going to offensive line and Hackett going to Denver? Do you think actually, I think actually that matters more than, <clears throat> than Adams leaving. Steno was a wizard at the offensive line and then they moved him to OC. Okay, fine. But now he's lost the art of like, they were renowned for getting like late round picks and then just turning them to superstars and they, are just kind of stuck in the mud with what they have and they can't kind of turn dirt into gold. So to kind of speak here, but which was what Steno was doing. And now Steno's OC and they're kind of struggling at what used to be their strength a year ago. It is. It is. It's overmatched as an offensive coordinator too, because clearly the, the play calls aren't working. And Rogers is asking for something simpler with, with less motion on it. And it, Oh, it, it's, it's definitely has to do something with Steno not being there. Because against the Jets, I get it. And I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll almost put Quentin Williams right up there in the category of Kenny Clark. He looked a lot better than Kenny Clark. I don't know where Kenny was at here against the Jets. Um, but I, but defense by itself, I think they did more than enough to get, get the job done. But, I mean, we couldn't even handle a simple twist or a stunt. Newman was, like you said, he's on roller skates all, all the time. Now, Rodgers is, is playing happy feet back there and being like Tom Brady in his latter years. Yeah, it's just it hasn't been good, man. It's just been frustrating. You think we actually take a look this week? Because Lafleur said, "Hey, it's it's all on the table right now as far as what we could do mixing up this O line." Or do you think he will actually attempt at putting his best five out there, or will he continue as he's as we talk about the pet kind of the Packer way and how they go about things? Yeah, it's which is crazy because I think like. So Hanson gets hurt in the game, which I think next week they would have rolled out Hanson instead of Newman, which isn't any better. It's not better. But like, we've been saying for since week two when we were actually winning that it makes most sense to do when Bach is healthy, to do Bach, then do uh, Runyon, Meyer, Jenkins, Nyman. Like we've been saying that for three, four weeks now. Um my guess is they just roll out the same old, same old. And I, I, a lot of people were saying Zach Tom, which I don't, I think the coaches want Zach Tom to buff up. I think they're worried about Tom. Um, yeah, that he's underweight, even though it does say on Wikipedia that he's, that he's actually 300 pounds, but it's neither here nor there. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, 
they're stuck in their ways, man. It's the Packer way of we got to develop these guys. We don't want to throw these guys in the fire. We got to build up their confidence. We're going to redshirt them the first year. And then it's like, but here's the thing too. Like, okay, you have one weak spot on the, on the team supposedly, which is Newman, right? Everyone on the offensive line is just getting obliterated. Like Rogers has zero, zero time. The wide receivers are basically running into themselves on routes. Like, there, it, the whole thing is just way out of sync. You want to know what's crazy about it too? Think about how, for how long ever everybody was after uh, Bakhtiari's head and saying that you know we should we should cut ties with him. Is either that or it's like, hey, when Bakhtiari comes back, this will all work itself out. Our offensive line is going to start to click. And by the way, he, I think with everything else going on, he's playing pretty darn well so far. Yeah. Everything else ain't ain't going according to plan. So. He's not getting any loving. Yeah, it, it's hard to get any loving on the offensive line when Rodgers has like 12 pressures, like seven hits, four sacks. Like it's hard to get any love in there. Um, Jenkins looks, I mean, it's two part. Like he's coming back from ACL as well, but Jenkins looks brutal at right tackle. And he looked um, really good. And he looked really good at, at tackle last year when he when he played left tackle until he yeah. went. I, I thought it all right, so he can actually play all five exceptionally well. And maybe it's the ACL knee, but I'm like, between him and Newman, both of them, I've seen way too many whiffs and just missing blocks. And there, those two are not on the same page. It's time, Lafleur and Senovich and whoever whoever else get I feel like out there. I actually feel bad for Myers because Myers is just stuck between like with Newman. Right. So if Newman misses an assignment, Myers is just like absolutely SOL. Like he's like, what do you do in that spot? Like he is basically looking bad because Newman looks terrible. I agree. And I, I, think, I think Myers Runyon along with Bach have all been playing more, more than above average football. But so like, broader view of this like we were going into the year we lost Adams you need to pick up pieces to um to kind of replace the production of Adams right so besides Aaron Jones who has done anything like in terms of progressing everyone's regressed right would you agree with that like Rogers looks a shell of himself like because he because he doesn't have a crew one, even though he spoke it during training camp and how he says Lazard's ready. But if you do really take a look at it, Lazard's a a, a really good three, maybe two at best. Yeah. He's, he's a big tight end who tell you what, Sauce Gardner, and I think Sauce Gardner is going to be a top five corner. Sauce Gardner ate him up. Yeah. And during that whole game. But I mean, you have him, he's regressed. Cobb was taking a step in the right direction, but hey. You know, Randall Cobb's going to – Randall Cobb, so. Yeah. Um, Dobbs and Watson are rookies. Like, Watson having a tough time staying on the field. Dylan looks terrible. Like – he's Oh, he's, he's definitely – so it's like Aaron Jones has taken a step forward. Dylan's taken, I would say, a half step back after the Jets game. I almost want to say three-quarters of a step back. He – Yeah. That, that was probably his worst professional game he's had. Jenkins step back, like – I would say uh, Runyon's playing very well. Like, he's playing all right. Um, and then you flip it, like, we've been talking for an extended period of time on the offense. Flip it to the defense. Besides Gary, like, Amos step back. Savage looks lost all the time. Walker <laughs> be- Walker's a rookie, but besides his first two games, step back. Like, yep. Stokes, okay. step back. Quay took a major step back. Him and, I mean, what about Devondre Campbell? What did he miss? A handful of tackles last year, like four? I, I almost a, want to say he missed four against the Jets. I saw a stat this, like, today. Like, he has 10 missed tackles on the year, and he had four missed tackles all last year. Like, it's insane. Like, um, Eric, Eric Stokes has taken a step back as well. Douglas. Douglas is playing out of position. Like I've been saying that also since week two, like step back, like this whole team has regressed, which is why I hate when they say on paper, this team's going to be top five, top three defense when it's like. uh, Tell you what, I still still believe in this. I still believe in this defense. 
I mean, LaFleur said it today. When you when an opponent goes one of 11 on third down, you should be able to win those games. I think our defense has actually played pretty well. I think it's more so a product of if you put a defense on the field again and again and again and your yeah. offense doesn't get anything going, it doesn't matter how damn good. You could have the 03 Bucks defense. You could have the 13 Seahawks defense. They're going to get gas sooner or later. Yeah. And also, I think that they start to lose their momentum. And I don't, I don't want to say they finger point at the offense, but it's like, hey, we're doing our job. And you guys just put us out here again after yeah. after another three and out. I think yeah. that's more or less what that is. I mean, but also you take it and Joe Barry's softness, which he, I think he did actually <laughs> correct against the Jets. Yeah, it's getting to that point where they're going to be like, e- the defense is going to start shouting at the offense to, to do something. So what do you like think can be the spark plug in the offense? Because – um, do you think the O-line shift does something where it's like, okay, finally we could get the run going? Like what? Because handing it off 20, 20 times, 30 times and getting three yards isn't going to really work either if you can't get the push. Like I get – you got to feed Jones. Jones is your superstar on offense now. But um, – that, that, yeah, uh, That's one thing I am starting to legitimately worry about now with the offense because the way I see it is – I had thought all along, once Christian Watson finally gets worked into this offense, we have a deep threat, things will start to click. Now he's potentially going to go on a a four-week IR, or now his hamstrings lingering. I almost am, like, putting his first rookie year as a wash. With him being out, Sammy maybe comes back, but I don't even think Sammy's going to consistently get open like Rodgers wants him to. Romeo can get open at times. I mean, what if you're searching for the answer for me – I think the only thing that I would have to say, and it really is a win now mode because after this year, and I think Rogers retires no matter what, I think you got to go out and get somebody. I see that's, that's, that's the camp that I'm, I'm going to sleep in. I think they're at the crossroads now where they're not going to pull the trigger. The Packers never pull the trigger on, on stuff like this. And I think they're looking at it like, what, why invest in something? I, I think they're legitimately concerns at 1265 about like actually going out and getting someone like this would be a much easier pill to swallow if Rodgers got dealt in the offseason and you're dealing with love at quarterback and saying okay like we have a bunch of rookies at wide receiver we're seeing what love is at like this was pay Rodgers a ton of money come back we're gonna not rebuild we're gonna reload as they love to love to say <laughs> in green bay but uh this is kind of a mini rebuild like i think it is taking it, there's a little bit of shock right now with the media and with fan base of like kind of not realizing what's what's happening now that, that was put eloquent it is and then and the longer this um struggle continues the more that people are going to go after Rogers head saying it was a no brainer to trade him the off season. I mean, shout out to my old man who he's, he thinks he's looking like a genius right now, which kind of is. He, he said it like back in March, he's like, or even before then, Hey, I want the Broncos to be losing these games. Uh, the higher they can be able to get in draft positioning, which was like number nine. I know they really want Rogers. We can be able to get draft capital now and start a better rebuild than when Rogers retires. So it is. I mean, if this continues, it's kind of a sad way to see Rodgers go out because the Boo Birds were out at Lambeau this past Sunday, and they were even out, uh, I think, a little bit uh, against the against the Patriots as well. The biggest cheer at Lambeau, which is sad all day Sunday, was when Love took the field. Was it? Yes. <sighs> yeah, it's. Uh... It's Which tough. Is, you, I mean, I, hate, I, mean, I, you, I think you both. I think both. It. Yeah, I think both of us said last year at the sign, if you would have put us on the record, that I mean, I I know myself. I was thinking, I I love draft capital. I want to be able to acquire as many picks as possible, and to think about like the Jets have like four first round picks this year. Uh, I I think I saw writing on the wall with with Rodgers and how he played in the 49ers playoff game, and I don't think that he was going to get like really any better than that. And especially if you don't fill the wide receiver shelf, but uh, I'm not ready to stick a fork in them yet. If no. we, if we don't, if we come out against the commanders, the, the Washington football team and we lay another egg, Dave, I'm, I'm ready to put, you know, put Brett Hundley in there for God's sake. 
Oh boy. Um, it definitely makes watching the game a little bit more interesting, not knowing the outcome before, like we would, you know, call each other up and be like, we would nitpick wins. Like we'd be like, oh, okay, this looks good. This looks, needs some work. Like, and we're like winning by like 30 points and still finding like holes and like being like, you know, pissed off fans that, you know, so-and-so missed a tackle or something. Now it's like, who, daddy, are we going to win this game or not? <laughs> I think yeah. that's the important reason. I, 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 I took last week off and I wasn't feeling up to par, but I'm like, hey, we, we got to continue to do this no matter what the performance is out there. Uh, cause it's, I mean, not a, I mean, it is a sign of things to come. We're not going to have another, I would think 10 years of hall of fame quarterback play. I mean, we're going to have to go through some, some mediocrity here soon. And I think we got to kind of brace, brace for it and, and kind of take our medicine. Yeah. A little bit, uh, kind of embrace it a little bit, if you will, too, and kind of make the wins a little bit more enjoyable now. And, um, but, um, yeah, this was kind of a, a shell shock of two weeks here for us. Um, and then we got, yeah, we got the Commanders, we got the Bills, and we got the Lions, which Lions played tough too, man. So, I mean, if you could go two and one in that stretch, I think we're kind of back on track. Yeah, that puts yeah. the, what, five, five and four? Yeah. And Vi Vikings are have a pretty healthy lead as well. Right now. I mean, I don't want to look too far forward. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do the little floor, floor one day at a time and focus on the the game that we have in front of us. We're a game at a game at a time at this point, man. We're just like, um, but yeah. Hopefully, I I don't want any more like coach talk of you know it, it's all on me. Oh yeah, Aaron Jones is not good enough. Get him four touches a half. Well, no. No kidding, it's not good enough. And, oh, yeah, we'll look at the offensive line. Like, you're the head coach. You you see what's going on. Do something about it. Like, I'm miles and miles away from Green Bay. I do not attend a single practice. I don't know what's going on in your facility, but it's clear as day in the 60 minutes of football I watch on TV what is going on. And it is. It's tight. I mean, you, you think about it. We've we've been able to uh, somehow avoid it because we've had a really talented team the past three years, and Lafleur has been able to say these things and and not make the necessary fixes. But when you don't have the talent around you, like a Devonte Adams, to sure up the offense when things aren't going um, as you like them, then it, it it's about time to actually put your you know put your money where your mouth is and actually make some make some moves. Yeah, we're. I think they even don't know what the moves are. I think they're really searching for answers. Agreed. But uh, we'll wrap this thing up. Um, kind of let this, you know, big sigh out and let all the, you know, anger and kind of uh, pent up frustration the last two weeks. But we'll be back next week. And uh, good lord, if we could just beat the commanders. I don't care if it's seven to three, just make it three to two, make it as ugly this, as possible. I don't care. Does this almost feel like, I mean, going back to 2018, does this almost feel like when Joe Philbin took over in a sense, not like LaFleur is getting fired, but I just think back to 2018 and we won, we won against the Falcons. Um, I think we had lost like a couple straight after Mike got fired. Cause it was yeah, December 2nd, a couple games after that, we like, we beat the Falcons I was I was pretty you know ecstatic about that Falcons win and that wasn't even that great of a one. <laughs> yeah, I, I would I would like to think we'll probably feel that same way if somehow some way we can yeah. come out with a with a win this this upcoming Sunday. I'm no longer nitpicky about wins. Just just win. I was actually at the game that Mike McCarthy got fired after against the Cardinals. Yeah, which, um, yeah, I it just has a lot of similarities to 18 of just how we're trying to go about getting anything going. Um, but I'm, we'll be ecstatic if we win. I mean, at this point to the commanders, the commanders looked like they could do nothing against the bears. So that, but the trend has been, Oh, Packers are eight point favorites and we've been getting blown out of the water lately. So, I mean, we're what eight eight points over the Jets and lost by 14, 17. 
I forgot. I just got skunk junk during the game. Twenty-seven <laughs> ten, so seventeen, yeah. but it's whatever. But all right, man. Final uh, final thoughts here. A new appreciation for victories. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure to that. Cheers, Dave. <laughs>